Hi, this is Carly Abrahams. I'm here for Pass Gamsat. Let's get started on some physics. A nice simple one for you. Thomas is running late for his bus, so he runs to the bus stop. Following is a graph of his speed and the 10 minutes it takes him to reach the stop. So, first thing you should do when you're presented with a graph is to look at the axes and on the y-axis notice that we have speed here so we have speed and not distance it's very easy to get those mixed up and on the bottom we have seconds in time so when acceleration is constant the following equations can be used um, you've got distance from the origin equals initial velocity times time plus average acceleration times time squared divided by 2. So again, don't, these ones are prettier formulas, equations, than the um, other questions we've been looking at. But you've been given these really important equations, you should just be grateful. I had to memorize those at one stage. So um, we can handle this. Approximately how far away is the bus stop from Tomas's house? 50 meters, 75, 95, or 115. So, key concept here is in velocity versus time graphs, the total distance traveled equals the area under the curve. Now, I can go through an explanation of why that is the case if you like. Or we can just re remember that velocity versus time, total distance is the area under the curve. So for those of you that want to know more about why this works, you can look into a textbook on calculus. Uh, basically by finding the area under the curve, we're finding the integral of the, acceler the acceleration. So... <laughs> Uh, you won't need to know very much in depth. You'll just need to remember that um, in velocity versus time graphs, total distance is the area under the curve. So the question is much more simple than it looks. Um, just know the very basic rule of physics. So divide the shape into smaller ones and use your high school maths to work out the area under the line. So um, you have four seconds. You have four here times 12 and then you've got half of that 4 times 12 is a square 2 times 10 is a little square 3 times 2 times a half is a little square there um, so add all of those up together in this little equation and you'll find that the area equals 95 which was C what was the average acceleration after 4 seconds? Um, key concept. First look at the key for the equations given. Which value is the question asking for? Then look at the equations. There should be one where you can fill in every value except the one you need. So the question has asked us for the average acceleration. Looking here at the graph, wow, well, there is a equals the average acceleration. That's very exciting because that's what we want to know. And um, now we want to look at all of these formulas and figure out which one we have all of the other variables for. So going back to the question, average acceleration after four seconds, um, we have time equals four. We have the initial velocity because he started at zero. Um, and the distance of the origin, distance from the origin also. So we need A, we know or can determine from the graph that the initial velocity U equals uh, zero. Distance from the origin D equals, um, going back to this uh, graph, D equals 12 times four times a half, which equals 14 meters squared. So, um, this is the four seconds here, and we just found the area under the graph, which is what we did last time. Uh, you get your n velocity v, which is um, 12 meters per second. Um, time taken is t, so that is 4s. So looking at here, here's your final velocity, which is 12 seconds. 
and time taken t is 4 seconds. Um, then we can use the formula v equals u plus a times t. So plugging in the variables that we have up here, you get velocity 12 equals 0 um, plus 4 times the average acceleration and solving for A, you get average acceleration equals 12 divided by 4, which equals 3. Which of the following graphs best represents the distance travelled? Now, this one is really testing your comprehension of what you're looking at. So you are not looking at distance over time, you are looking at speed over time. And so in this part of the graph, Thomas is speeding up. He's increasing his speed. In this part of the graph, he's still moving forward, but his speed is staying constant. And in this part of the graph, he's still moving forward. He is just slowing down in speed. So this whole time he's still going forward. If he decided to go back home, then the graph would be going in this direction. It would be a negative speed. So after going through all of that, the slope here equals the distance over time. And the velocity versus time graph is simply a graph of the slope or how steep the line is. Um, so, from 0 to 4 seconds, the slope is positive and increasing. So, this is your distance graph. And you can see that the slope here is positive, always positive, and it's getting steeper. So, this is the distance graph that would come from your 0 to 4 seconds straight line. From 4 to 8 seconds, from here to here, the acceleration remains the same. So if you're doing a distance versus time graph, he would be getting the same distance away from home every second. So it's, cons it's a positive slope and the slope is staying the same. Now the tricky part is 8 to 10 seconds. The slope is positive, so it's in this direction, but it's getting, the slope here is decreasing, so the line is getting flatter. So that's what the distance over time will look like. So the answer then is B. So if we go back here to look at it, uh, B has a slope that is increasing, and then it's positive, but it stays the same. He's always getting further away from home. And then towards the bus stop, Tom slows down. He's still getting close to the bus stop, but the slope is getting flatter. It's getting smaller. Did you get that one? I hope you did. Next part is how could the distance of Tom from home after four seconds be represented in a formula? Hi.